Hello, and today we decided that, well, we didn't decide, I decided, that I'm going to actually do another video. Today I got a surprise in the mail, something I've been waiting on, anticipating for a while now. And this would be Carl's aluminum carriage for the single extruder for my replicator too. So we're going to go at a different angle here for camera because most of the work I'll be doing will be up top here. So it already came with pre-printed nylon spacers. He does note in the documentation, if you read over the instructions, make sure these are seated properly. They may have shifted during transportation. Then you also have a little parts bag here, a couple wire ties, two screws I assume will be needing. Oh yes, I'm going to need some blue Loctite as well. Let me grab that real fast. Okay, I got my blue Loctite as well. So the first thing he mentions in the instructions, of course you're obvious, I had this thing completely stripped down. I got the side panels off, my acrylic enclosures off of it, the door, the windows, the filament has been removed, uh, as well as the power disconnected and the SD card removed. And if you have a glass bed, remove your glass bed before you drop a tool on it and break it. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's almost done that. I'm sure there are people that have actually done that. So don't forget to remove that glass bed. First thing he mentions is we're going to remove the active cooling fan, which is two Phillips screws here. That will come out nice and easy. After you remove your two screws or get them loose, you're going to notice that this piece may actually drop off. This is your air duct. Don't worry about it. It's easy to put back on, set it aside. Pull your screws out of your active cooling fan and set your active cooling fan aside as well. Set your screws somewhere safe where you're not going to lose them. The next thing he notes is we're going to go underneath here. There's going to be two screws underneath. And by undoing these two screws underneath, we'll actually be unscrewing the heater block. Again, set the two screws from underneath from unscrewing the heater block aside so you don't lose them. And then carefully pick up the whole assembly. When I say pick up, I mean straight up because you're actually pulling your heating block and nozzle through here so you don't want to tear your ceramic tape on the back or the front by pulling it off to an angle. So pick the whole thing up aside and set it aside. In my case I'm going to set it in the back of my machine here. I recommend not setting it straight down on the nozzle. Set it down on the stepper maybe. On the back of the stepper. Would be a good position for it. So you don't damage your nozzle. And now we have our carriage. And our carriage only. So at this point we're going to loosen the four screws. Let me change the direction here. Over here you have four screws on this stepper motor. Now we're going to loosen these four screws on our stepper motor here. Actually, we're going to loosen two of them, the one here and the one here, we're going to loosen. The ones in the back here, just opposite, you'll actually have to remove completely and set those two screws aside. You also want to be careful because you also have a washer on there as well, so don't lose that washer. In my case, the washer seems to have stuck to the plastic X end. And now I've already loosened the two up front. And now we should be able to simply rock and move forward. Our stepper motor, releasing the tension on the belt, like so. Now that we have the tension off the belt, there's a little clip underneath here that is holding the belt in. So we want to pinch the belt down. And 
and pull it forward. And you see, that would have been something that would have broke my glass heat bed. Stepper motors do have a tendency to do that. I'm sure that would have broke it good. Let's just set that aside for the time being. Not a single scratch. Not even a dent, a nick, nothing. That is some really strong aluminum there. Thanks, Bottle Works. So now we got our belt completely off, apparently. That we now have to work on removing the actual carriage. He recommends doing one side at a time. From what I've read on the boards, the best method I've heard of so far is to go underneath and put your two thumbs on your left and right side of the front and with a little pressure simply push up that works we have nothing left but our bangs and of course we want to do the same thing to the back we want to go in from the other side with two thumbs, one on each corner, and push up evenly on each corner at the same time. And if it pops off with any pressure like that last one did, it's going to go flying into my face. Let's put my fingers on top just in case. There we go. So now that we have that off, he wants you to make a conscious note on what is the difference between the front and the back of the carriage? Since this is my first time installing this myself, I'm going to take a conscious look at it myself and make sure I have this right. Yes, the back is the one with the little screw nub in it. So that's one way you can tell it apart. So this is the front and the back. The back is also going to be the side that has your hook for your belt. Since we have that here, let's go ahead and grab the right key. And we're going to loosen that right now because I know the belt is going to be the next thing tightened. So we went ahead and loosened that. Again, check your nylon spacers. Make sure they're seated properly, flush, both sides, and in the middle, push them down. Make sure it's all in there good. We have a loose belt clip here. That's good. And we're going to basically I'll do the back. It's easier for you to see. Make sure the bushings ride right in the middle like so. And then the same with the front like so. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stepper motor back on over here on the right side of the machine. And I'm going to go ahead and put in this case, Al's aluminum idler back in on this X end over here. Bring the belt across, tuck the belt up in the back, and tighten the belt onto my new carriage. And I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and put the idler back on and my stepper motor back on as well. I tightened down one screw on the top right hand side of the stepper motor just to hold it in place so it doesn't fall again. So, but this way I've kept I've kept the belt loose and for a good reason. I figured it would be easier than for me to crawl underneath to simply slip the belt on right here, put the carriage back over the bushings, hold, make sure the belt stays in place by putting your finger here, and then simply reach underneath with your Allen key and tighten that down. Now we have our belt securely fastened. We could probably go ahead Move that stepper motor back over all the way. Putting some tension on that belt as well. There we go. And now we have to worry about centering the bearings or the bushing, sorry. And for this I'm going to have to grab 
my parts bag. Okay, I opened up the parts bag and we took out the four set screws. The very, very, very small four set screws. So we're going to find the right size bit for the set screws. It's a 1.5 millimeter hex. And this is where a little bit of blue Loctite is going to come in handy. But what we're looking to do I want to make sure my bushing is dead center where it should be. Everything looks good there. We're looking to put the hex in the front and just a little bit of pressure on the bushing, not much. Just enough to hold it in place. See, that's too much. It won't move. And that's only one. Much better. So we're going to do this with all four. I'm going to put a little bit of blue lock hood on there as I do it myself. Just with a little bit of pressure. And you can feel the tension of it. If you ride it, you'll know if it's too tight or not. So let's go ahead and do all four. Now I've gone and installed the four lock screws here. And you know, when he says lightly, he's not kidding. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on that at all. Okay, so once you tighten these set screws down just a little bit, you just want to catch that bushing. You don't want to squash it or push it against the rod. You'll actually force the, the bushing to go in towards the rod too much. It's going to be unnecessary tension. So you make sure you're kind of pretty much squared off. And I did that by going up against the X end here. And I know I'm squared off. So I look at it from this point of view. That's squared, okay. And then you make sure you got a nice smooth ride back and forth. And I did this by taking the stepper motor off because that way I can get a better slide and a better feel for it. Make sure it's smooth across the whole way. Put a little bit of blue Loctite on there, small drop on each one and get it tightened just perfect. Now we're just going to simply put everything back together again. So we're going to throw the other back on wide piece here. The wide piece on your right is going to go towards the front of the machine in case you forgot when it fell off. Some tension on the belt so I don't lose it again. There we go. Throw our stepper motor back up in there as well. Plug it back in, tighten it down. Don't forget you have washers on these stepper motors. The washers need to go to the front of the screw if you leave the screws in. Sometimes it's better to take the screw out all the way and make sure you get the washers in properly and everything. It's even better actually if you put the stepper motor in facing the correct direction too. That makes a huge help. Tighten everything back down again once you have your stepper motor back into place. We got ride. We're not quite on the belt. There we go. Feels good. It does. So tighten your stepping motor back down. Bring your extruder back up. Drop it straight in. Coin block mounts in the same middle position there. Take your two screws, bolt them up underneath. Take your active cooling fan, line that up on the side where it belongs. Don't forget your active cooling duct. That just simply goes in here like so.
take your two Phillips, screw that back in, and put the tension back over there. There you have it. Pretend everything's screwed together and it's not rocking like this. I'm not putting everything together because I need to pull it all apart again. Since I'm going to be next installing Carl's aluminum X ends, so there's no point in me doing it. But I trust if you took it apart watching the video, and I just kind of showed you how it goes back together again, I'm sure you can do it. So, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped. And if you have any comments to make, please leave them below. If you have anything bad or negative to say, you can leave them if you want to. If you feel better, it makes you more of a man. I don't care. I'm not going to pay attention to them anyway. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you next time.